Welcome back, everybody. This is Third Phase UFO Report. I'm your host, Rich Giordano. So I hope you are buckling up. This is going to be a great episode. We're going to go back two days ago and talk about the vintage UFO, that picture that was found in this guy's uh, father's photo collection. And then we're going to go down the wormhole to last June and talk about this really interesting video that looks like uh, the gimbal. So let's rock and roll, baby. In just 50 minutes from now, well within the hour, the moon is due to have visitors from another planet. Former astronaut Wally Schirra at his side. Man on the moon. That moment without Walter, inconceivable. Oh, boy. Welcome back to Third Phase of Moon. Blake Cousins here. we got a special report for you today. Moments ago, I received an email from Michael in regards to a photograph that he uncovered just after his grandfather died last year. Now he has his grandfather's full photo collection and he came across an individual photo that caught his eye and he submitted it to us right here at Third Phase of Moon. We're looking closely at the photograph captured within a commercial airliner. What's outside the window? Could it be a UFO? We've got the special report panel today with Rich from Goofon and Michael from Dark Hour Paranormal, including Dr. J from Dr. J Radio Live. We also have a new member on board the panel, a retired physicist. Alex is gonna be chiming in on the photograph as well, including my brother Brent Cousins. We're all gonna chime in in regards to this photograph, the evidence, and in relation to some of the other nostalgic UFO photos that have made the world scratch their head whether we're alone in the universe or not now we're looking at this photograph very closely and it's interesting to notice whatever this object is it appears to be in my opinion outside hovering in the air or moving throughout the airspace close to the commercial airliner what could this possibly be again this was taken in the 70s way before photoshop any kind of cgi in my opinion after i received the information from michael this photograph is authentic now the question is what could it be could it be some kind of experimental aircraft an artifact within the lens all right now let's take it out to alex alex i know you have a major background in science uh, can you give us your opinion of what you think this photograph represents Hi, it's Alex with Third Phase of Moon. This is a real interesting picture. It's, um, it's hard to make out what all the individual pieces are, but it's obviously taken out of an airplane. Um, it's old. The white speckles on the bottom half of this photo are fairly interesting. I think those are reflections of something inside uh, next to the seat in the window. Maybe it's a piece of a uh, jacket or something, but it's a, it's definitely a reflection. It wouldn't be in the windscreen windshield uh, the blobby object on the top of the photograph is um, Something strange uh, It doesn't look like a craft. It doesn't look like anything um, Viable I don't think I believe from looking at it and enhancing it a little bit. I believe that they are just um, some sort of a splatter on the windshield, maybe something hit it, a, a speck of something hit it and um, uh, marred the window. And what we're seeing is a pit in the window or several pits in the window, not actually something outside. So that's my opinion. Thank you very much. Welcome aboard, Alex. Some good points, actually. And I, I don't like correcting anybody, but he said that uh, there was damage to the windshield. Maybe this was bu a bug that splattered on the windshield or a chip it's a side window a windshield is specific to the front of a a vehicle moving vehicle you know whether it be a train a plane or an automobile but anyway this kind of does look like it could be a chip in the window you know how it got to the side window you know they're pretty high off the ground but uh, we'll go over that here in a second and alex also said that he thought the paper was a reflection. You know, they're showing those little bubbles, you know, kind of looked like bumps on the paper. That That's just the, the photo paper that it was printed on from Kodak. But let's take a look at what a windshield would look like or a bug on a window. See, now you got me saying it. There it is on the left. <laughs> 
there's a chip. Now, there's many different types of chips. You've got deep chips, shallow chips, chips that spread, chips that don't spread. You got round holes. You got splatter like this. This is looks like a bug a bug splatter. So let's look at the next one. I mean, really, this is amazing, right? Okay, so now we see what looks like a chipped window that could be in the shape of a person. Kind of look what we see over here on the left. I don't know, man. But uh, the UFO looks a lot different. It looks like it has appendages, except the leg part. It's broken, and it looks like it fell off or something. You know, I, I don't know what we're looking at here. But it's pretty close to a chipped window, last one. And that one kind of looks like a bird flying. Uh, there was a lot of samples. We could sit here for an hour and do that. But I just wanted to show some comparisons. And I have to admit, it's not that far off. The color's weird for our UFO guy. It seems like where you have the hip joints and shoulder joints and the head, it's dark. And the limbs are light gray. And the body, the torso, is a type of mustard color. Pretty wild. Now, let's take it out to Brent Cousins. Brent, what's your thoughts on this photograph? There's a few things that stand out while looking at this photograph. We're moving in, particularly, we got a good zoom, we got a good close up on this thing, and it's revealing things that leave other questions out of the equation. Let's just say this could be a speck on the lens and on the shield of the aircraft. There's a series of photos which leans towards a big question. Is this a speck of something on the glass of the plane? And we're looking at it and I could rule this out because if you see the second photo, you can see that the window of the plane is in fact clear. So something's going on here. I'm gonna lean towards that this is an object outside of the airplane and Michael's grandfather was lucky enough at the time just to pull out his camera and noticed something there and he snapped the shot. And what a great moment. This was captured in 1971, pretty much a vintage photo. So there was no Photoshop or CGI, like Blake said earlier. We're looking at something that is still unexplained. We're looking at the shimmer on top of the picture here. You could see kind of like a ridge pattern going on. I don't think this is reflection within the cabin next to the window. I'm thinking it's just basically the, the pattern of the paper itself or the print of the photo. It creates these kind of ripple grid effects. So that's what we're looking at there. Nothing too much to think about except what's there in the picture itself, this anomaly. I'm thinking there's gonna be more of these vintage photos that come out when people pass away and then they go into their parents or grandparents kind of vintage photo collection and then they're gonna pull out and see something that we're seeing today, new UFOs that has never been seen before. All right, I'm gonna roll through some photos here and just take a look at the wall. You can see a before and after photo there. Uh, you can see it was in one pic and not in the other, this object. So I'm pretty sure it's not a smudge and not a chip on the window. Uh, Brent said, pretty much echoed what I said about these bumps. It's just the paper it's printed on. That's how they did it back in the day. I know, I have some photos I sent to them yesterday that look just like that. But here we are looking at uh, before and after photos. There's after or before right there. And then you see the UFO. That's the window the guy looked out. It's pretty amazing. Not much else I could say other than I really don't know. I'll never know. That's the whole thing. We never will. But we throw it out there just so we can discuss it. It's pretty cool. We got Dr. J from Dr. J Radio Live. I showed him the photograph. Uh, Dr. J, what's your thoughts here? What do we have here? We have images in the form of photographs that were found by this gentleman in his grandfather's possessions. Now, presumably they look like they're from the 50s era. Uh, I believe that's also even said there, but there are also some that on the back of the photographs are written 1970, 1975, and he even makes a point to showing us or telling us that this is the same camera that was used to film them all. Now, this is what we've all been waiting for. We live in a generation right now where people who were part of, say, Roswell, uh, the Kecksburg in, in the 60s in Pennsylvania, and other events have are passed away. I don't know if anybody from Roswell is still alive to this day, and if they are, they're not speaking. 
But it seems to us they're speaking from their death. And that's why I think we're going to see more and more of this. And I really hope there there are more and more viewers out there who will find something that belonged to their late parents or late great-grandparents or even just grandparents. The point is, is we know for a fact that the United States government, and especially I believe it was in the 50s, early 50s, started to implement the program to uh, debunk uh, J. Allen Hynek. Uh, that was his whole reason for Project Sign, Garage, and Blue Book. Now, on top of that, let me ask you this. If a photograph is taken in the 40s or 50s, can it be debunked? Well, sure, if it was created today, but back then, you would have to throw a th uh, hubcap in the air, something like that. That is why I tend to love older videos and pictures. Now, more so, we this person claims that his grandfather was a pilot. Pilots really are esteemed when it comes to knowing aerial phenomenon. So, uh, and another thing too is his grandfather never came out to claim credit for any of this. Apparently, this gentleman just found it, like I said, in his grandfather's possession. So, Yes, there are hoaxes, and at the same time, though, is I believe 10% of the hoaxes, or 10% are hoaxes, as what people say, of course, a, a majority are natural phenomena that people mistake for UFOs. But the point being said is that I think the military would be the one to hoax things that way they could ridicule this thing. Uh, and again, in even in the 50s, early 50s, Life magazine published vintage nostalgic photos like this. So my thumbs up, two thumbs up for this, because uh, again, this is just another piece of the puzzle and more evidence that a pilot saw something like Kenneth Arnold, and I hope more and more people come out. We received a video. I reached out to Michael and asked him his thoughts when he came across this thing and what his initial reaction to the photograph was. Here's a video that Michael sent to me. All right, here's the pictures that I got out of, um, it was a box that belonged to my dad and he passed away December 9th of last year. So I went to get some of his things and there were some old photos of my grandfather um, on a plane and it was him and his wife and everything, but uh, sure. The back of the picture, I don't know if we get the focus in really good. Yeah. I don't really like this one. There you go. The back of it. And like I said, I think it was the 70s because I have other pictures. Oh, uh, if the focus would come in, there you go. It's out the window. And this says 1975, but you can tell it was done with the same kind of camera. Um, see, they're all the same. That was out the window. I just said it doesn't focus really well. My grandfather. No, is it? Could have been. Um, let's see. And here's more of them. So th these are the ones I have. Yeah, that's my grandfather looking over the back. <laughs> I must have been my my aunt Doris, grandmother Doris. So, all right, man. Let me know what you think. Doctor J made a great point that people are passing away holding secrets that we've never heard of or seen. And uh, I'm a little scared about what he said. He said, uh, you know, we're going to see more and more of it. But it's true. We are. Even when I pass away, third phase of moon. Well, they'll never pass away. But the archives will be here for people to go through and accidentally find. I love it. And the guy, Michael, showed us the photos here. He was talking about them. You can see him here showing us that they're real photographs. Yeah, I know we can't prove that they're 1971 photos. I know it's impossible, but this guy's not asking for any money. He found this after his father passed away. 
you know? It wasn't like his father wanted anybody to, you know, see them either, which is interesting. He hid it, thinking that it probably could bring some turmoil to the family if that photo was seen by his uh, government friends, the public, who knows? Interesting that uh, he's doing this. I applaud him for it and hope many other people out there will do the same thing. Go through your parents' stuff. Look through all their things after they pass away. Don't let the government take it. All right, off to the next sighting. Uh, This one's from June, I believe, of last year. Are you still buckled up? I hope so, because we're coming out of this wormhole. Here we go. Next sighting. This is amazing. From last June. I remember this. This is one of the, uh, wow, too good to be true. You know, it's one of those. All right, here we go. All right, so are we looking at, again, another broad daylight sighting of a flying saucer? Because I don't know what's going on over the past week. I haven't seen so many submissions of a flying saucer in this shape craft defying gravity in an anti-gravity um, formation of flight, it seems to me. These characteristics of these craft seem to me that they're not hiding anymore. And this video that was captured from St. Tropez um, has an incredible photograph behind it as well so sometimes when you're filming this on your phone and iphone the quality you know 720 1080p um, if you could shoot it in 4k that would be awesome but the best res you're going to get out of an iphone or a phone is the photograph feature sometimes you might want to use it because when i'm going to show you the a photograph when you take a still off this video or excuse me if the photograph from the iphone not the video we can make out some incredible detail and uh, that's what we're going to pull up right now uh, from the submitter here it is this was i guess he took the photograph first and then started videotaping when the object was closer i'm going to add some brightness contrast so we can make this thing pop and uh, get our get a good look at this craft because right now this isn't any kind of drone that resembles a balloon drone or a drone that could propel itself in the sky, hold itself, sustain itself steady in the sky without any kind of indication of what makes it fly. Brent, your thoughts. What's making this hover? I was just, I was just blown away. Damn, that was a great photo. I was just looking at it. The detail on it was amazing. And again, this video is amazing too. You could see that this is your you know, typical drone. Again, just like last week, we've been going over these great flying saucer UFOs and we're not seeing propellers or any kind of action or emissions of smoke or anything. This thing seems so stable in the sky. Drones don't act like this. Uh, they wobble when they uh, tend to turn or any kind of activity. It's trying to get a GPS tracking. This thing is so steady and that picture is just outstanding. It's showing it almost looks ancient the the look of it it has these cracks and details but again it looks at that classic flying saucer look and again that photo i don't see any manipulation in photoshop yeah i want to get you guys thoughts in the uh, chat right now we're premiering this video let me pull up this photograph again so we can get get a really close look at this because uh, it really resembles what we're looking at here comparatively to the recently declassified footage that's been coming out. We're going to be doing some side-by-side comparisons of um, this thing known as the gimbal uh, captured by NASA pilots in a few years ago, comparatively to some of the videos that have been coming in to third phase of moon. And uh, definitely the similarities are incredible because uh, what's going on here is, in my opinion, uh, we've been putting it in the titles lately is they're not hiding anymore so here's a photograph from saint tropez tropez and then we're seeing it again i'm gonna add some brightness contrast you guys how see? big do you think this thing was it's hard to tell and what's making it uh, levitate in the sky making it stationary this photograph uh, i'd have to say i'm gonna put it in the thumbnail this is what people need to see 
Again, look at the undercarriage of it. It's totally no indication of what's making it hover. And then again, just a week ago, we've been putting out a lot of footage recently. I think we've had about two or three million views over the past week or so. And then uh, this video came out. And again, these broad daylight sightings in your face with no indication of uh, drone type technology behind it. Yeah, again, look at that. This uh, really resembles what we just saw earlier. They're, they're so static. The drones don't manipulate themselves this way in the air. You know, again, they wobble. These things are uh, out of control on, on the angle, too. A, a drone just doesn't hang off at an angle for such a long time unless it's drifting one way or uh, left to right or uh, forward and backwards. What we're looking at is technology that is off the hook. And with you guys out there, the the community working and giving us this kind of information and you guys getting it out these source links and sharing it with your friends is what it's all about and we're going to have a sneak peek with our documentary that we've been working on over the uh, whole year you know things got slowed down with obviously what's going on around the world with obtaining some of the information and doc um, interviews that we need to complete this documentary but just stay tuned for the end we're going to show you some uh, sneak peeks of what we've been working on but uh, in the meanwhile while we're doing this episode and looking at this incredible footage uh, some people are speculating that this thing looks exactly like the gimbal from what has been uh, declassified and been shared to the public nasa or excuse me the navy is admitting that what these guys have been capturing these pilots that they're not from from this earth well that is the big question but let's do a quick side-by-side -side comparison i'm gonna grab a still off this video and uh some people are saying it's a, a dead ringer it's a match so let's do this here's the still from the video that was captured and now we're going to compare it to the footage that was captured by the pilots i'm going to do a superimpose of the photograph and then I'm gonna slide the video to the left and there's the NASA or excuse me the Navy still photograph guys come on is this look it's a, it's is a clear this it, match guys? like you see that we have some anomalies on the bottom and the top of the disc captured by the Navy pilots again declassified footage it's and again, even out. in that uh, footage of the Pentagon footage, you can see how steady it is. Just as steady as this object. The same flight characteristics. Again, I'm going to bring up uh, the video still image to the left of it. And this is I don't cool. Know. Thanks I'll... for joining us, guys. I like seeing this, this transformation right there. Look uh, how it fits like a glove. If it, <laughs> you know, that if fits. It fits. That fits. Let me tell you guys, if that fits, uh, this is the evidence that has basically revealed itself that what was captured in broad daylight is the exact same thing that our Navy pilots there captured. There could be different scales of these uh, these objects, whatever they are. There could be prototypes, and this is uh, maybe a smaller scale of what the Navy pilot saw. But again, this, these are your typical information guaranteed. I'm not seeing any sort of CGI in these videos. You know, it has that red red light under in the undercarriage. And again, comparatively to the Navy footage, you know, theirs was black and white. So we're not seeing any color from theirs. But then again, it was the exact same uh, type craft, the exact same shape. It, we showed it to you. And... Oh, boy. All right. I chose this clip because I wanted to challenge myself. I did. I, I, I really don't want to look at it. I don't want to have anything to do with it. I don't care that it exists because there's so many questions I have. And the first one is, is this fake? Is it CGI? Well, I don't know. I can't tell. Sometimes it look, uh, it, look it even looks like that. It looks like the gimbal you'll see in a minute. It's very frustrating when we have something like this, you know, that that's uh, the gimbal, you know, the Navy video, TTSA, ugh. 
And uh, I always thought that this was an illusion or we think it's something. We're misidentifying an airplane or the way the light's refracting with the FLIR camera. And then I see this. Are you kidding me? If this is real, and it just might be, well, I, do we, how is it? It's perfect. It's perfect. We need to get the original. Yeah, I think Blake or Brent, one of them enhanced it, lightened it up, and to me, I have no idea. Two plates put together. There were people who actually showed that they could make this UFO with plates, but it didn't look like it. It didn't look like this. Is this a drone? Are we being duped by somebody with a drone? Because there are drones out there that are UFO drones. No, I'm not lying. It's true. Do I think this is that? No. But imagine if this is a legitimate... Just, just hear me out. Let's say it's real. What does that mean? That they're just coming out and allowing us to photograph and videotape them now? Is that where we're at? No fear. Is that what these aliens are showing us? Or is this how it's done? Is this how it's been done six other times we've had major earth-shattering catastrophes on this planet? Planet killers. I don't know. Do we start over? Are they teaching us a little by little? I'm talking about the aliens. See, I would think if the aliens were flying these around and getting this close, a couple of things may have happened. They want to see what the people act like when they see them. Do they start running? Are they scared? Are they photographing them? They're testing us. It would have to be one of those, right? And then, or that would be one of the reasons. The next one I would think is that we back engineered alien craft. And this is it. And this is one of them. Maybe this was the sports model and it's modified to look like that. That's the gimbal. But see, right there doesn't look real to me. It looks put there because it's too good to be true. Well, I don't know if it is or it isn't. I really don't. I never do. Never. Nobody can know 100%. But watch. If that's not it, then I don't know. I don't know what is. Well, one of them, here's, here's the catch on that. One of them is a FLIR camera and the other one is a regular camera. So it's an unfair depiction, but it could be it. If you take away the FLIR and just use a regular camera, maybe this is it. Maybe that's it. But why? You know, why now? Well, it's not just now. It's been forever they've been showing up. We're just seeing them more because there's more cameras, I believe. But uh, I want you guys to know something. You can send in your sightings to us. We'll be fair. We'll be nice. And we'll tell you what we think. That's what we do here. We're not experts. But send it in to Cousins Brothers Productions at gmail.com or goofonradio at gmail.com. I take UFO sightings as well and or evidence. Um, of course, it would go right into third phase of Moon because, you know, they make the decision on what gets posted. But nonetheless, we want to see what you got. You are breaking the... Uh, you're, break, you're making disclosure happen. You're breaking the silence. I don't know, but I like this video and I hate it. <laughs> I want it to be real so bad, don't you? It might be. That's what's the beauty of it all. Uh, all right. Well, today, February 16th, Countdown to Disclosure breaks on Amazon Prime and Vimeo and all over your streaming services out there. So rent it, own it, watch it. I think you'll love it. You can find me 
Where am I? I'm goof on. Rich Giordano. I am on Monday through Saturday live. 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. Live stream, baby. Right at Goof on. Yeah, we do it every day live. There it is. So come check us out. It's a fun time. It's a good, it's a good time. Alright. So we're gonna go down the hole here. You can unbuckle as soon as this ends. And we'll see you next time on Third Phase UFO Report. This has been a Third Phase UFO Report.